and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Hallelujah. Lord, we invite your presence into this service. God, we need you like we've never needed you before. We're asking you, God, oh God, to not just help us to have not just another gathering, Lord, but we want a holy visitation from you. We need to hear your voice as never before, God. Help us to hear and receive what the Spirit is speaking expressly to the church for such a time as this in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
That song tells the truth, doesn't it? God is so good. Amen. I thank him for his grace. I thank him for his mercy. Can we just stop for just a minute and just praise the Lord? His goodness is more than what we deserve sometimes. I'm not saying that we're, we're people that are so bad we don't deserve uh, blessings in our life. But God does so much for us that we don't thank him for. And I'm just thankful. I just feel to sing this chorus. Give me a seat. Thanks, thanks, I give you thanks for all you've done. Oh, I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, oh, I give you thanks. And I just want to say thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. Oh, I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks. Let's thank you this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. God, we're thankful.
Singing about the love of Christ is something that's very important. These are not just words that we're just spitting out here this morning. We're talking about the love that Jesus has for us. Amen. Listen to what this song says. Lord, I can't stop singing about your love. Oh, I can't stop singing about your love. Jesus, forever you will be more than enough. And we can't stop. No, we can't stop. And I can't stop singing about your love. No, I can't stop singing about your love. Jesus, forever you will be more than enough. And I can't stop. And I can't stop. And I can't stop. And I can't stop. Yes, hallelujah. appreciate you, God. We love you. We want to shout out to you and love God. In Jesus' name. Yes, Lord, I love you. Yes, hallelujah, God. Woo! Yes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, mighty God. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Yes, God is so good to us. God is so great to us all the time, always, always let's point that out always great to us even when we think he's not there when we think he ain't listening he's always right on top of you he's always great to us yes yes praise god thank you god for always being there for us thank you god for being there for this church lord in jesus name oh hallelujah amen god almighty yes jesus yes jesus god almighty Yes, if you have an offering, this is the time to come and deliver that. God Almighty, bless this offering. Bless us, God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us abundance that we may be able to give back to your people. In Jesus' name, amen.
just feel like we all just need to pray right now. I just feel like we just need to lift up our hands. I know we're praying. I know we're seeking God. But I just feel something in my spirit right now. Devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse you, you foul spirit of the pits of hell. In the name of Jesus. I speak the word of healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I proclaim freedom and liberty in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lift your voice up to him right now. Lift your voice up to him right now. He's worthy of our praise, honor, and glory. Lift your voice up to him. The Bible says that he's seeking for someone to worship him in spirit and in truth today. I believe God wants to do something in this service. I believe God wants to do something extraordinary and life changing in this service. I believe God's wanting to be a rule breaker in this service today. But it's going to be up to us to reach out to him. It's going to be up to us to do radical praise and radical worship. It's going to be up to us to give our all today in this service. If you leave today the same way you came in, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. Look, come on, let's push everything we got to today, church. Let's continue to reach out to Him. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That the Lord of all the earth care to know
Tower, which is where we're going. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. you have the interpretation, don't hold back. If God has given you something, speak it out. If you don't, it's okay, but if you have it, don't be afraid.
this car. Okay. Amen. Praise God. The Lord, I was standing over here, and the Lord spoke to me about Sister Kayla. And I'm not going to say, I'm not only going to say what God told me. But he said she has poured herself. And anybody that watches her, when she prays, she puts her whole heart into it. And she literally pours herself into that person. And pours what she has into that person. And the Lord said he's wanting to pour back into her this morning. So what I would like to do is I would like, is I would like to get the ladies to, to come around her and pray for her. To pray for her and to touch God for her. Because God's got a special blessing for her to mourn this morning, and that's what I feel. And church, let's gather around and let's pray. Ladies, in Jesus. for a moment here. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory. God, we exalt your name, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Lord, you are worthy. <laughs> As I was sitting playing the drums or in between praying, pastor came to pray for me and God told me and I received it as a word from God of a fresh anointing. And I think it's by no accident that that has been what we have been discussing as a church through, through preaching as well as conversations, that we have been discussing the anointing. Friday night, there was an incredible message that was shared by Brother Sanford about oil and what it meant and that it brought life and that it was the very substance in, in, in which was required to live as anointing is in the way that we live our lives for God, but not just for God, for ourselves, for our families, for each other. You see, when we pray for each other with an anointing, it's different. It's different. It, it, when something is anointed, it changes everything. It says that there's, there, there are yokes of bondage that are broken with anointing. There are blessings that are, that are given forth with anointing. We, we long for it. We, we strive toward it. And, and, and God is wanting to bless us, church. God is wanting to give us a fresh anointing, a new anointing. You see, you wouldn't, you wouldn't wake up in the morning expecting not to breathe because you know you have to do it. It becomes involuntary. And such is God's anointing that when it's upon you, it's involuntary. You don't choose, you don't choose to remove it. 
You see, that's the thing about oil. When oil is put onto something, it's, 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 it's that way for a reason because it infuses itself. It gets in there. It gets deep. It gets in the cracks and the crevices and the imperfections. And so if you could take and you could imagine what oil does to a surface that is porous, what it does is it, it moves about it and it fills it and it makes it all uniform. And such is the anointing of God. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how you're broken. It doesn't matter what's wrong, what's right. It doesn't matter where you've been, where you're at, or where you're going. But, but, but the anointing, such as that oil, it makes us all what God wants us to be. See, God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't see me any greater than he might see you. He doesn't see pastor any higher than he would see any of us. But he sees us all the same. Therefore, his anointing is sufficient. <laughs> I'll say that again. His anointing is sufficient regardless. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. But just as I think of a cast iron skillet. If you've ever used one or seen one, you know that you oil it and after a while it wears off and you have to do it again. Typically, people every time they use it before they store it for a lengthy amount of time, they'll apply oil to it. But that's to preserve it. You see, that's to keep it in the condition that it was meant to be in, such as the anointing of God. It says that we were made in heaven. It says that we were made in the image of our Lord. So just like that pan, once we get used a little bit, once we get put into the fire a little bit, once we get something going on, you see what I'm saying? That's what it was meant to do. Just like us, we were meant to live for God. But every now and then, you got to reapply it. You got you to protect it. You got you to have a fresh anointing, church. You have to have something put back onto your life that can keep you going, that can keep you back in it. And that's what and, and see that's it says also in the Bible and God just brought this to my mind But that cast iron pan is, is, is just that it's iron and in the Bible it says that iron sharpeneth iron You see I can't give you an anointing But what I can do is I can sharpen you and I can make you better I can make you more keen and I feel like in this time I, I feel like this church this body of Christ I've been here for 10 years now and I feel like we are more we are more together than we've ever been I feel like we are more united than we've ever been. I feel like we worship together more than we ever have. I feel like we pray together more than we ever have. Not, not only when we are together, but for each other. Because I have labored in prayer for you guys. And I know you've done the same for me and my family and each other. And, and that's important. And that's important because we're here to support each other and to lift each other up. And as pastor said in this time, God spoke a word to him. He told him, he said, don't close the church. Even though COVID and all these things are going on, he said, keep, keep the church running, essentially, is what he told him. He said, if they want to come, they can come. If they don't, they don't have to, you know, on and on. We all went through it. We know what I'm talking about. But the point being is, just like that pan that sits in that cupboard, it's there. It's ready. It's ready to go. It's always there. And if you need it, you can, you can, you can use it. Whereas that's how this church, and that's what God wants to do. He's saying, I want you to be there. I want you to be ready. I want you to be ready to labor. As Pastor spoke about this morning, be ready to labor. He said, be ready to go into the field. He said, you might be in the storehouse at the moment. You might be tucked away, just like an oxen might be put up for the night. But if you've ever seen an ox pull a plow, such as the verse says, anyone with their hand to the plow does not look back. That ox doesn't know. He just goes and goes and goes and goes. And then at the end of the day, he goes to, to where he might reside, a stall or whatever it may be. But then the next day, he's ready to go again and again and again and again. And that's what God wants from us. Nothing can stop us. Nothing can stop us. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, have you ever, have you ever seen, I'm sure you have, a puzzle? And they have puzzles that, that are three-dimensional. They have puzzles that have 4,000 pieces. And then they have puzzles such as the ones my son does that have about three pieces. But when you first dump it out of the box, it doesn't look like anything. You might piece together a little piece of an image here or a window or a, as I like to do, I like to identify the corners first and the, and the edges, you know, because it's distinctive. But then once you start to put it together, it makes a little bit more sense and it makes a little bit more sense and on and on until finally you get down to that last piece. And anyone who's ever, who's ever done a puzzle, you know the joy of, of especially if it's a thousand pieces or whatever it may be, you know the joy of taking that last piece and putting it in place and the feeling of completion. 
And I honestly feel like that's where we're at as a church. I feel like God has put us together in such a way, in such a fashion, and with such a, a, an ability that that last piece has been placed. And I feel like uh, with, with, with the sense of completion and the joy that he feels, not saying we're done, we got a long way to go. Uh, you know, you can take something apart as quickly as you can put it back together. But I feel like when, with that sense of completion, there is a fresh anointing for us, church. I feel like that we are viewed and we are whole. And God is taking us and making us ready to pull that plow or to push that plow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's, it's an amazing thing to be able to see something complete. And, and, and don't get me wrong. Obviously, we have many days ahead. But, but I feel like Pastor's vision, what God gave him for the community behind us, the, the messages that we've been receiving lately about going and working and toiling and moving and shaking and not being stagnant. You see, the world right now is in a place they're trying to stop us. They're trying to stop us, whether it be with whether it be with with COVID, whether it be with with politics of the day, whether it be with uh, attitudes and dispositions and these types of things. Anyone who's been out in the public more than five minutes understands what I'm saying. The world is trying to stop us as a church, as a body of Christ. <clears throat> but God will have a church and God, God will have a church with a purpose. Amen. Amen. If you read this book, if you go through this Bible, you can find many, many, many men and women that were in just that circumstance where it seemed as if there was the, the world was falling apart, that everything was coming down around them. But God built them up and God lifted them up. God took that puzzle that was their life and he rearranged it and completed it. And then he sent them out on their way. You see, God never did a work in anybody for them to stay quiet or to go back where they came from. Right, right. And a fresh anointing is just that. And this is what God has just, just put on my heart this morning. It's just that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's meant to be used, church. Yeah. It's meant to be used just like that pan gets coated and covered and seasoned. Huh. Yeah. I know there's some seasoned saints of God in this house today. I know there's some seasoned saints of God. And just because you apply a new coating of oil to that pan, it does, it's still seasoned. It's still seasoned. And just because, just because you've been living for God for a long time doesn't mean you can't receive a fresh anointing. Doesn't mean you can't do something great for God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of announcements. Don't forget this Saturday night at 6 p.m. Uh, we'll be having our night of worship. Brother Cypher will be leading us in acoustic with an acoustic set. Of course, there'll be others, at the, uh, some of the other praise team helping out, but he'll be leading us in an acoustic set. We'll be no preaching. It's not what this is about. We're just going to come in to worship. Amen. Amen. So if you want to be a part of that, that'll start at 6 p.m. Also, lady service Saturday, August 15th at 10:30 a.m. Sister Carson will be ministering that that Saturday and also that. Sunday morning. Amen. And uh, also, for those of you that might be watching this morning by way of Facebook, if you'd like, and also in here that don't know, we do have a, a YouTube channel for our church that we post our services to after church. And they don't get up immediately, but usually within a day or so, they'll be up there. And uh, it's a lot better quality because we're filming from the camcorder, the sound quality, the uh, viewing quality, everything is so much better. So if you want to go back and enjoy, again, one of the services like today, go to our YouTube channel. It's Calvary United Crestview. Not Crestview, Florida, just Calvary United Crestview. And there's a cross, our, there's an emblem of a cross with a circle around it is our church logo on that particular particular YouTube page. So I've been going back and enjoying them. It sounds so much better on the camcorder. Amen. It just sounds better. The preaching sounds better. Uh, the, the music, everything just sounds wonderful. But we don't know. We can't get that camcorder, camcorder to do Facebook Live. So amen. So but now if y'all want to spend $10,000, we can get a good, awesome camera. Can I get a vote? Anybody? Anybody? Let me just tell you, if we get $10,000 to this church, it's not going on a camera. <laughs> Later on, if we've got hundreds of thousands in the church to spend, I might spend 10000 on a camera. But not now. Not now. It comes, we're not spending that on a camera. Not at all. Amen. Sister uh, Stacy uses her phone. She keeps trying to convince me to buy her an iPhone 11 or whatever the highest is. So she, we can use it for the church. She's only thinking about the church. I promise you. She is selfless. She is not thinking of herself in any way. 
So I said, if we're going to do that, then we've got to leave it at the church then, Sister O'Neill. <laughs> Amen. But she, she'd like me to buy her an iPhone 11. That way the church could benefit from it. Amen. I have a, um, I have a message, but also, I, I don't know, I, I, it may... I don't want to preach two messages, so I'm going, to try to, I'm going to try to weave these two together. I believe I can do it because I have a word, uh, a very strong word. For, from, it's for every one of us, but Brother Lauren, I feel strongly it's for you as well. And what you're dealing with in, in, your, uh, in your life right now. Uh, let's turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 16. And you can stand for the reading of the word. Uh, Sister Courtney, if you want to write these other scriptures down, I may come to them. Genesis 4, verse 1 through 13, and Hebrews 12 and 24. Right now, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give her a few minutes here. We're going to read Psalm 16 and verse 10. But then Sister Courtney will also get to Genesis 4, 1 through 13, and Hebrews 12 and 24. Psalm chapter 16 and verse 10, this is a prophetic utterance concerning the Messiah, but I'm not talking about Jesus today in this particular scripture. I mean, not that I don't want to talk about Jesus, but I'm going to apply it a little differently. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Can we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We give all the glory to your name. God, we ask you, Lord God, to manifest your glory. We ask you, Lord, to manifest your power. Lord, you've already done that, God, and we're asking today that you speak through your word to encourage us and edify us. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we give all the praise to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 You can be seated this morning. Tell you what, Sister Courtney, we're going to go ahead to Genesis 4, and I'll come back and re, uh, do Psalms 16. But let's go to Genesis chapter 4, and we're going to read verse 1 through 13. I'll try to read it quickly. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 through 13. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell." In other words, he was angry in this face, the figure of his face fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground cries out to me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 24. Hebrews 12 and verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things. Somebody say better things. Than that of Abel. Than that of Abel. I want to preach for a little while the voice of the blood. 
the voice of the blood. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Lord, work your divine work in this house tonight. Today, God, let the voice of the blood be heard today. Let the voice of your blood be heard in heaven today for the glory of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus, we give all the honor and the praise and glory to your name. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I'm excited this morning that the blood has a voice today. Hallelujah. I'm glad today that the voice of the blood is crying out for my soul today. It's crying out for the souls of my family today. It's crying out for the souls of this city today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The voice of the blood. The voice of the blood. The, the blood is not silent this morning, but, but the blood is crying out. The blood is crying out to God. And even though the blood was shed 2,000 years ago, a little over that, the blood is still crying out today for the salvation of mankind. The blood is still crying out today for the redemption of men and women's souls. Can somebody say praise God? Praise God. Amen. I'm not like Brother Adrian. I can't, I can't scream for 30 minutes or do whatever he does, 30 mile, 60 miles an hour. Even if it's not screaming. And I wear out after about 10 seconds. I got to come back down to 10 miles an hour. I can't do 60. Amen. I don't know if I just need a new engine or what's going on, but amen. <laughs> that old boy can crank it out. Amen. Didn't he do wonderful the other night? Amen. You'll probably enjoy it more on you. Go back and watch it on YouTube. Amen. He's, he's awesome. I love it. He's anointed. But, but as we read the scriptures, and I'll get to Psalm chapter 16 and verse 10 in a minute, but as we read the story of Cain and Abel this morning, we see that, that Cain and Abel were two very different boys. It, it doesn't matter if you have two children. One can be perfectly all right and the other one be as ornery as can be. Amen. We know that if you have kids, if you have more than one, they always say, uh, most parents, after they have their first child, they say, well, look at how easy that was and how wonderful and sweet and kind they are. And then they have the second one. And then there was Nevi. Nevi is sweet. She is kind. There is no doubt about that. But she's got some Macaulay attitude in her that, that Daniel does not have. She's, she's got some Macaulay spunk in her that that old Neil didn't get. It's just a different little bit of spunk there. You know what I mean? Amen, amen. She'll haul off and pop Daniel across the head. Amen. She won't think twice about it. Amen. Thank God Daniel holds back and doesn't hit her back. He controls himself for the most part. But, but Cain and Abel were two totally different boys, and, and they grew up enjoying two totally different things. The Bible said that Abel was a keeper of the sheep, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. And, and their lives were taken two totally different directions, but, but they were still brothers. And, and so we, as we read in the story, each of them come to God, and they give an offering. And you cannot convince me this morning that Cain did not know what to bring. If Abel knew what to bring, then Cain knew what to bring. If Adam and Eve taught, taught Abel, you've got to bring a blood sacrifice, then I believe they taught Cain, you've got to bring a blood sacrifice. But there again, you teach two kids the same thing. One goes that way, one goes this way. My, growing up, my parents taught us not to use drugs. I did, my brother didn't. Growing up, my parents taught us not to live outside of your means. My brother did. I didn't. Well, I mean, during drugs, I did. But, I mean, as soon as I got sober, I knew exactly what to do with my money. And that was, don't spend it. I know that's not a financial wizard. But some of you, if you could just get that down. That would be, you would be a financial genius. You wouldn't even have to worry about investing. You wouldn't have to worry about multiplying your money. Just learn how to not spend it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Unless you have it, then by all means spend it. But if you don't, don't spend it. Amen. But the scripture says that God rejected Cain's offering, but he accepted Abel's offering. And we know that it was because there was no blood sacrifice. But, but I also believe it's because Cain did not bring the best of what he had. 
The Bible said he brought fruit of the ground. It didn't say he brought the best fruit that he had. But Abel brought the firstlings of his flock. He brought the firstlings. He brought the best of what he had. And friend, let me tell you, it matters when we come to the house of God to bring the best of what we have. It matters that we bring our best praise. It matters that we bring our best prayer. It matters that we bring our best attitude. It matters that we bring our best cooperative spirit. It matters. Now, some of you, sometimes your best attitude is just not to say nothing. And that's okay. If that's your best attitude, then do it. Do it. Just keep your mouth shut. Others of you, your best attitude is to keep them eyes looking straight and not roll them. But just do it. Just don't roll them. The best of what? The Bible said he brought the firstlings of his flock. But in that process, Cain got jealous. Oh, people in the house of God get jealous of one another whenever somebody gives the best of who they are. And God honors that. God blesses that. Well, we understand that sometimes we give the best of what we are and we don't get blessed immediately. There's that situation. But don't be aggravated if you're not blessed if you're not giving the best. Don't be aggravated with folks who are getting blessed if you're not giving the best of who you are. That's what I talked about, Brother Kelly, this morning in Sunday school. I said, Lord, I need to tune it up. I need to do better. I want to get blessed like him. We had that competition going. But Cain, instead of, instead of just dealing with the situation and instead of, of uh, correcting his attitude and going back to God with the right thing, he began to plot. He began to plan. He began to let a bit of some bitterness creep up in him. And the Bible said he went out and talked with his brother. It didn't say he yelled at his brother. It didn't say he fought with his brother. He just talked with him. There's nothing worse than when, when a brother comes up just to talk with you, but secretly they want to murder you. <laughs> Typically, murderers don't come up letting you know what they're going to do. They act like that you're their, they're your friend. And there's just no, don't be a murderer in the spirit. Don't don't act like you love somebody and shake their hand and when you all the while have a plan to betray them or to do something behind their back. It would be best if you just didn't talk to them, and or it would be best if you repented. If we repented. But the Bible said he talked with his brother and then he slew his brother. And then we read the, read the scriptures how that God approaches him and said, what have you done? Have, uh, and he says, where is your brother? And he, he begins to lie and said, I don't know where my brother is. Am I my brother's keeper? You better believe you are. You better believe we are. We're responsible for one another in the house of God. It's my responsibility to keep my brother. It's your responsibility to keep your brother and your sister in the house of God. It's your responsibility to care when somebody's not in the house of God. It's your responsibility as well as it's my responsibility. But the Bible said that, it, that God said his blood cries out to me. From the ground. But what was the blood of Abel crying out? Justice! Judgment! Condemnation! That's what the blood, the blood of Abel did not cry out for mercy or for forgiveness or for redemption. It cried out for judgment. It cried out for justice. It cried out for condemnation of the one who committed the crime. But the Bible said that the blood of Jesus speaks of better things. It cries out for mercy. Whenever you sin against God, the blood of Jesus does not cry out for justice and judgment and condemnation. He said there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus is crying out today for mercy. Mercy and forgiveness and grace. Right when you think God is against you, the blood begins to cry out. And you may even deserve the wrath of God. You may even deserve the judgment of God, but the blood of Jesus is crying out. It's crying out. It's crying out for grace today. It's crying out for mercy today. It's crying out for rest restoration today. 
The blood is crying. The blood has a voice today and it's loud. The voice of the blood is louder than your sin. The voice of the blood is louder than the devil's voice. It's louder than the accuser of the brethren. It's louder than your thoughts. It's louder than your own words. It's louder than your attitude. It's louder than your disposition. It's louder than your rebellion and disobedience. It's louder than all of that. You see, we, we talk about people that have a voice in our generation or, or, or in past generations. We, we talk about how they had a voice in that generation. In that generation, it wasn't that they had a physical voice. It was that their voice carried weight. Their voice carried weight with the movers and the shakers. Their voice carried weight with those that can make a difference, whether it be in government or in the church. In other words, when they spoke, somebody listened. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing, the voice of the, of the blood. That's the voice I'm talking about that has voice with authority. He's got, he's got the, the, the audience of the one who paid it all today. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> His voice has authority in it. The voice of the blood. I'm telling you, if you don't know how much you need to appreciate the blood of Calvary, friend, let me tell you one thing. If it wasn't for the blood of Calvary, there'd be no anointing. There'd be no grace. There'd be no mercy. There'd be no restoration. There'd be no deliverance or healing or salvation. He paid for all of that because of the blood. You can't gather up his blood. It was spilled into the ground. You can't go and gather it and find it up. It's the principle of the blood. <laughs> he didn't contain enough blood in his body to cover 7 billion people or more than that throughout time. It's the principle of the blood. It's the principle of it all. Now, the way I was raised, they'd want to gather it up, put it in a bottle and set it over there and worship it. That's the way I was raised, you know. With all these little things you got to collect from the saints, dead bones and, and all that. If you go touch and you be healed and say, eh. I understand by faith we can have a prayer cloth and all that business, but you start collecting dead people's bones and putting them up in churches and saying, if you touch this, you can be healed. And, you know, we, we found a little bit of blood, the blood of Jesus. Come on over here and let, just be careful. Be careful with that kind of stuff. But the voice of the blood is crying out today. He's crying out for Crestview. He's crying out for the souls of men and women in this city. He's crying out for your mistakes. He's crying out for the things you don't even know that you have issues with. He's crying out today in your behalf and in my behalf is what he's doing. Psalm chapter 16 and verse 10 said that he will not suffer thine holy one. He will not leave. Thou will not leave my soul in hell. I want to encourage somebody today, and Brother Lauren, I felt strong that this was for you, but it's for all of us. I don't care if God gives you something. I'm going to latch on to it and get a little nourishment off of it. <laughs> give, me, give me that steak. Give me a bite of that steak over there. My goodness, I don't care. They prophesy to you and say, God's doing this such a cow. I'm like, God, I'll have some of that too. Thank you. For I'll take some of that. This is about the only time if it's not on the table, I am going to ask for it anyway. You'd have to be in Sunday school to understand that statement. If it's not set out on the table, I'm going to say, now God, where is it at? I'm missing something here. Bring it here. Bring, I told them in Sunday school when they... Set table up. Set a table. You go. Your guest is somebody's house. They put food out. Don't start asking where's the salt and where's the ketchup and you know just eat whatever they got. If, it, if it's bland, eat it. Don't ask for salt. If it's your buddy, if it's your parents, that's your business. But but if somebody invited you and you're a brand new guest in their home, eat whatever they put before you. And there's Bible for that. But he said, Thou will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. I want to tell you this morning, Brother Lord, God's not going to leave you in the H E double L that you have been dealing with. He's not going to leave you. You're not going to see corruption. God's not going to leave you in that situation. Come on, somebody. God is never going to leave you in hell. God's not going to leave you in a situation that is trying to destroy you. He will never leave you there. You 
might go through some H E double L, but God won't leave you there. <laughs> God won't let you see corruption in the end. He's going to say, No, devil, I don't believe. I don't believe. Has anybody ever been through some H E double L? God didn't leave you there. God didn't let you die there. God didn't let you be corrupted there. He said, I'm not going to leave you in hell, neither will I let you see corruption. I will bless you because the blood is crying out today. The voice of the blood is crying out saying, don't leave them in hell. Don't let them see corruption. Don't let them be destroyed. The voice of the blood is screaming out today. It's screaming out to God. God, don't leave them in hell. Don't leave them in this situation, God. Don't let them be destroyed, God. Don't let them. situations where I thought it's over with. I'm going to die here. But the blood cried out and said, no, don't leave him there. He's got too much to offer. He's got too much. Hallelujah. You're too valuable to God. The blood was shed for your disobedience. The blood was shed for your rebellion. The blood was shed for your stupidity. It's not always rebellion and disobedience. Sometimes it's just plain dumb. The blood was shed for that too. I mean, if the blood really, I imagine, if the voice of the blood really spoke out loud, I imagine sometimes, God, would you please save this idiot? Would you please save this fool? Let me tell you one thing. The voice of the blood never goes out. It doesn't grow hoarse. It doesn't go out. He doesn't strip a gear like I do. He doesn't do it. The voice of the blood is crying day and night, day and night. We have the accuser of the brethren on one side, but we have our adversary on the, I mean, our, our, our advocate on the other side. Jesus is advocating for you. He's advocating for you because of the voice of the blood. Hallelujah. Nobody pulls for a loser. <laughs> but Jesus does. Because he knows he can make you a winner. He knows he can put you up on top. He knows he can bless you. He knows he can restore you. He can fill you. And he can deliver you. His confidence is not in your ability. One time you pull for losers as if you know you can help them to win. <laughs> Amen. If you can somehow help. Thank God. He said, I'm not going not to be left in hell. God's not going to leave me here. No. no uh, uh. I'm not going to I'm not going to be corrupted, Brother Lauren. I'm not going to be. You're not going to be corrupted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He ain't off in sin, but he's just dealing with some stuff. He's being attacked. But God is saying, brother, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Let's all stand in the house of the Lord this morning. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord God, let the voice of the blood cry out, God. Let the voice of the blood cry loudly, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. And I know we're loving this. I know we love for the voice of the blood to cry out for us. But let me tell you one thing. That same voice is crying out for this city. There's people trying to destroy their lives. And, you know, I don't understand it, but I've been in a house before where the Lord, well, I did, it was back in 2013. And, uh, a friend of mine that I grew up with, my, my best friend from third grade all the way up until the drug world, he introduced me to that and it wasn't his fault. He didn't pressure me. I did just, he was the door that was there. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, he came to church a couple of times, but God showed me he, 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 he had a seed of joy, but the enemy took it as soon as he got home. And he died, lost. 
unless God showed, did something different. As far as I know, he's, he died without God. He didn't have a drug overdose. He didn't, he didn't try to kill himself, but he'd been addicted to pain medicine and uh, just pills, pills, Valium, Xanax, Oxy, just whatever for, for 20 years. Probably took a toll on his heart and he died at 32 years old or 34 years old in his home. And then uh, one of his niece got, that lived in that home as well, she got cancer and she died. And I don't understand all that, but after those things happened, one day I, I went by their house and I, was, I didn't know what it was. It wasn't God I found out later on, but I was kind of drawn to that house and I went by to see them. And when I walked up to the, drove up, his brother-in-law, my friend's brother-in-law was out in the front yard, tongue all over the place, teeth missing, so whacked out on crystal meth. And they all pile up in mom and daddy's house. They'll have 15 of them living in a three-bedroom house with one bathroom. Kids, brothers and sisters and all that. And uh, I, did, I just, I couldn't go in that house. I had Daniel with me, but I, uh, I wanted the woman to see Daniel because he was newborn at the time. And so they came outside and I thought, I'm keeping my distance, don't touch my boy. Fingers, you know, just about black from smoking cigarettes and whatever else. Just, just stay in that house, just smoking like a train. Smoking like a train. What I'm doing, crystal meth and just all kind of stuff. But uh, when I left, I knew something wasn't right. And the Lord said, the spirit of death is on you. That's what was in that house. I had to pull over. I pulled over. I knew something wasn't right. I pulled over and I began talking in tongues, laid hands on Daniel. He wasn't but three or four months old. And I, I pulled over and God broke that off of me. But I've thought about that for years. The spirit of death abides in that house. Why is nobody dead in that home any more than what has already been done? You know why? Because there's a voice crying out for that family. That's the only reason that the rest of them aren't dead is because there's a voice of the blood crying out for mercy. God, don't let them die like this. Don't let them leave this world in this condition, God. Lord Jesus, God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you, we need the voice of the blood to cry out for our families that are in tr trouble. They're sick in their bodies. They're, they're lost. They don't know God. But we need to ask the Lord, let your blood cry out for them. Even as he did for us, if the voice of the blood can hold back an entire family from being killed by the spirit of death, then I believe he can handle the, our situations. Would you want to do you want to come around these altars this morning? Let the voice of the blood cry out for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of our nation, for, for the sins of our city, for, for whatever there is need of. Hallelujah. There's some families in this city that I believe the spirit of death is on their home. But there's a voice crying out for mercy in their lives. There's the voice of the blood that is holding it back until we get into those homes and we can reap their souls for the kingdom of God. He's holding it back for us to go in and, and to place the, the harvest, to reap the harvest. Take your sickle and go in and reap the harvest in Jesus' name. Jesus, here to
You may not be in one today. That's all right. But if you get in one, you just understand. He'll never leave you there. He'll never leave you there. And Sister Melissa, you want to testify? I do have something I want to say as we close up. And I'll let her testify. From the message that we heard Friday night and then some things that Pastor said this morning. It was a, it's was a. it been a few years now, probably 15 years ago. Um, we were in a service and a lady came up. She was a friend of mine, had been for years, and she didn't look like herself all of a sudden. She was possessed. Well, they went to praying for her, you know, in Jesus' name and pleading the blood over her life. Well, she was delivered. She came to me after the service and she said, I've wanted to kill you for over three years now. And she said, today, when I was in the floor squirming around and they were pleading the blood over me, she said, I felt something pour over my head. And she said, when that poured over my head, I no longer wanted to murder you anymore. She said, that spirit left me. And she says, I love you now. She even told me, she said, we were riding in the car before and I and the, and the spirit would tell me, run into that tree, drive this car into the tree. She goes, I wanted to kill you, but I knew that would kill me too. So I wouldn't do it. But she says she felt that, you know, I'm sure it was anointing, whatever, the blood, the oil that, that he talked about Friday night. He says she felt that it, nobody poured anything over her in the, you know, physically. But she felt that in the spirit. And I just want to thank God today because what he said is not just some words. There really are people that want to kill you. <laughs> I mean, I know that sounds negative, but I'm just thankful that the Lord delivered her and I, I'm alive. Yes, amen, amen. And like she said, it may not be the person, it's the spirit. That person may not care nothing about killing you, but a spirit wants to. Amen. Uh, now, today I talked about being laborers. Don't worry, I'm not going to throw anything on you. you gotta, we're going to do in the next 10 minutes. Everybody's like, oh my God, he went and got those. Uh, but this morning, God, laid at Sunday school, God dealt with me about laborers. He said, I don't need more preachers. I don't need more evangelists, pastors, teachers, prophets, singers, musicians. We have plenty of that in here. And he said, we, and I even talked about how we have people in here that labor in here, do anything and everything in here. Thank God for all of it. But he said, I need laborers out there. And then he confirmed it through your word, through the, the interpretation God gave you. He said, take my glory outside of the building. Now we know that. But apparently God has to keep telling us that because maybe we don't do that like we should. You know, I understand if you invited somebody to church in the last six months, praise God for it, but it probably should have been more than one person. And it's more than inviting people. It's about being a witness to them. And so I like what Daniel calls this. He said, Daddy, when are we going to go remind people? Ever since he was little, he loves it. He loves reminding people. And so we laughed about it, called that, but I thought, you know what? They do need to be reminded. Because they've been told before. Somewhere they've heard about God. Somewhere they've been invited to a church and they need to be reminded. Hey, God still loves you. God still wants you to come to the house of God. God still wants to help you. They need to be reminded. And so, I don't know how many we have. We ordered these a while back. But just if each of you take just five cards. If I think we can do that. Each adult take five, five, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. This, we should have plenty for that. So just, if you will, Cole, you can pass some of these out. Or they can come get them either way. Just four or five. And just this week, say, God, you put these in my hand. I know Pastor did, but it's of God. Take them with you and, and pray over these cards. Say, God, I'm not perfect at this, but I, I, let me help you out here. Has anybody ever looked at anybody in a grocery store and said, hey, how you doing today? Have you ever done that? Was it, were you able to do it? Wasn't that big of a deal, right? That is literally how I do it when I'm in a grocery store. I'll be in the same aisle. Now, it takes me about 10 minutes to work up my nerve. I pray. I'm like, oh, I don't want to talk to them. I look for people around my age, somewhere maybe I can relate to, you know, and I always think older people, to be honest, is, the, is this off? Can you turn, take the Facebook Live off? I'm not saying nothing bad, but this is personal. Just press share after you're done. To be honest, when I see elderly, old, white-headed people in Walmart, I think they're died in the wool Baptist. They don't want to hear nothing I got to say. Oh, okay. yes, That's the first thing that goes through my mind. 
died in the wool, old Baptists, don't want to hear, I don't, I don't want to talk to them, because I think their whole life they've been Baptists, and they don't want nothing to do with this. I battle that. So there's times I have to force myself to go talk to a person in their 70s. I have to force myself to do it, because I'm like, God, they, they probably need you. So, but what I'm saying is, it's just this simple. In the aisle, you got your shopping cart. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Hey, I, I don't want to interrupt you. I, I don't want to keep you. But look, I just, I just want to give you a quick invitation to the church that I go to. This is Calvary. And everything depends on their response. If they say, okay, thank you, and turn around, let them go. If they stop while I'm saying that, and they look at it, I'll say, what well, do you guys go to church? Do you, do you have a church? Do you go to church? Just let the Lord lead you in that. It's not that difficult. But I'm telling you, God wants us to labor out there, out there. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to pray over these cards now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you, Lord, for these invitation cards, God. Lord, I pray that you anoint them as we place them in the hands of others, God. That, God, that you would speak to them and tell them to come to Calvary United. But let it not just be an invitation to church, but... Help us to be a witness to them, God. Offer prayer to, for them. Whatever the need may be, God, help us, Lord. Use us for your glory, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, you heard me tell you those six, you ever watch a highlight film? A person's 40-year, I mean, 25-year basketball career in the highlight film? Yeah. You see all the highlights, don't you? Yeah. That's what preachers do. Praise God, I was in Walmart the other day and I walked up to somebody and they got the Holy Ghost. That's the highlight. What he didn't tell you, the last three years he'd been doing that and nothing happened. <laughs> they make it sound so easy. I have been rejected. I have people look at me like I'm stupid. I have people take it, throw it in the ground. I have people just walk, whatever. But... If the voice of the blood is crying out for mercy for them, we need to get in there and reap them while there's still mercy for them. In Jesus' name. We love you all. We're dismissed in Jesus' name.